G'day mates, Kegel11 here and welcome to the 1997 Japanese Grand Prix from the Suzuka Circuit in Mie Prefecture, Honshu Island. Now this is the penultimate race of the season and as you can tell from the uh, change in background music, the nitty gritty of the season, particularly of our point standings. It's like in real life, Michael Schumacher versus Jacques Villeneuve. Villeneuve, if he has any chance of winning the World Championship, he needs to either win this race come second, and for Schumacher to be fourth or lower, Villeneuve third, and Schumacher sixth or lower, or Villeneuve fourth, and Schumacher does not score at all. Anything other than that, and Michael Schumacher will go away from this race as the driver's champion, and most likely, Ferrari, the world constructor champion as well. So anyway, looking at the real life standings, Michael Schumacher did in fact win this race, followed by Heinz Harald Frenzen in second and Eddie Irvine third. Um, of, despite Michael Schumacher winning, the, not winning this race, Frenzen second gave Williams enough points to, for them to clinch their ninth constructors title. Jacques Villeneuve coming in uh, fifth place, uh, but we'll talk about that later in the video. Um, for the majority of the race, uh, Eddie Irvine, who finished third, was leading the race, but was forced to secede his position to Michael Schumacher to benefit Schumacher's um, world title ambition. Other than that, not much information on this race, quite normal. So, looking towards our driver standings then, uh, as I said, Michael Schumacher is in the lead on 85 points, followed by Jacques Villeneuve on 72. Only 13 points behind, for reasons like, and like I said before, Villeneuve needs to either come win the race, come second, third or fourth, providing Schumacher finishes fourth or lower, sixth or lower, or doesn't score at all respectively, then he's in with a shot to continue the championship battle into the final round at the European Grand Prix. But considering how Schumacher's going this race, it's a 50-50 shot. We'll have to wait and see how this goes. Following behind Villeneuve, we've got Jean Alesi, the best of the rest on 52 points, 20 points behind Jacques Villeneuve, and keeping good taps against Eddie Irvine. Irvine managed to outscore Alesi in... Uh, actually, no. Alesi outscored Irvine in Luxembourg, but Irvine managed to score four points catching up on Alesi in Austria. So, it'll be interesting to see how this will end up in this race and the next race. Following behind them is Heinz Harold Frenson on 41 points, so he's not so much giving Villeneuve the support he needs as per in real life. But v Frenson is coming off two second place finishes in Austria and Luxembourg behind his teammates, so we could very much well see Frenson move further up and maybe keep Williams in the title race. And rounding out the top 10, we've got Gerhard Berger in sixth place on 24 points, having scored since Italy. Then Kent Levin, the Stuart Wonderboy, uh, scoring two points at Luxembourg. His total is now up to 23, so one point behind at Berger. Could expect an overtake there sometime soon. And then following behind him, we got Jean Carlo Fischer-Keller, Olivier Panis, and the second Stuart of Rubens Barrichello. And in the Constructors' Championship, Ferrari has filmed the lead on 129, 16 points ahead of Williams Renault. So both Williams drivers need to go really well in this race to continue the Constructors' Championship over into Europe as well. Following behind them by 50 points behind Ferrari, Benetton and Renault. So they're pretty much sitting on the ramp because they're, what, 32 points behind Williams Renault, but uh, 49 points ahead of the next one down, Stuart Ford. So Benetton looks set to stay in third place throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Stuart Ford in fourth place on 30 points giving themselves a good margin over the rest of the middle class pack. That consists of Jordan Peugeot and Frostmage in Honda. Uh, those two teams battling the score in Luxembourg, so they're both on 18 and 14 respectively. And rounding out the point scoring finishes for the constructors is McLaren Mercedes on 8 points. Here we go, the starting group for the Japanese Grand Prix, and in the first place we have Michael Schumacher, followed by Jacques Villeneuve. So, very good front row there, followed by Hans Howard Frenson and Gerhard Berger, the first of the Benetton. Then John Lacey and Ralph Schumacher, the best of the Jordans. Very good there. 
And rounding out the top 10, we got Eddie Irvine, Gene Carl Fitchikali, Kent Levin with a 38268, then Mika Hakkinen. So overall, not a bad top 10. Um, Coulthard is 12th, Panis, and both Prost, sorry, 11th and 13th, followed by Gianni Morbidelli. So looking at the rest of the grid, it doesn't look, seem to be very a very out there grid, very predictable. Uh, some good results here and there with, like, for example, the McLaren or the Stewart. Uh, but other than that, a grid that we can expect. We'll be curious to see how Schumacher goes to the first corner to capitalize on his pole or just give it up to Boone up entirely. Uh, but equally a good result for Levin, ninth place. He should be able to capitalize on that just behind the Jordan, their rivals for this season, and uh, Eddie Irvine's Ferrari. So we can probably see some overtaking there to get into the first corner. This is going to be a very interesting race. I hope you all guys enjoy it. I'm really interested to see how it goes. Let's get this race going. Exactly the best does, but oh my goodness! He's hit Kelly just blindsided right in front of Levin and almost taking him out of the race. We don't want to repeat of Germany, boys. Keep it clean. If we're coming to the first corner, very, very nice. We're coming to corner two, three, all third gear. Four. He's hit and collision there again. All right, now coming into the Dunlop curve for the first time. This is an RPL corner that you can accelerate really well at. And obviously, Levin has got the idea. Oh, it's gone for an overtake. No, he's gone off the dirt, and Fischer Keller takes him. This is a big battle between Levin and Fischer Keller now. And in front of them, we've got to see both Benetton's. Oh, coming out of Degna, Levin goes slightly off course and has lost Fischer Keller. But don't worry, we can catch him up as we come into the hairpin for the first time. This is a first or second gear corner, but if we can Taking in first as well. Looks like Levin in a good run out of it. Catch up to Fischer Kelly. Can he get him before the spoon curve? Oh, Fischer Kelly's left the inside open. Oh, it's going to be tight. Levin has taken him eighth place as we come in the spoon. As we trailing in behind. He's got through past Fischer Kelly. Trailing in behind both Benetton's. All right, coming to the back straight. Oh, the Benetton's are seated. Can Levin take both of them? He's got both Benetton's as we come into the... Fearful 130 yard, named as it is, the radius of it is 130 degrees. You think I share fine now, coming to the Casio Triangle as Levin tries to catch up to Hunt Hal Frenton in the second Williams. Very tight there, further forward than what it is in, North, in other years, so the breaking points are quite hard as we come across the finish line the pit straight for the first time. And looks like Levin's got to run the Hunt Hal Frenton, he's got to make a move on Frenton as we come to the first curve. And looks like he's got him on the inside. Levin's down up to fifth place. He's in the point. Really well done for Kent Levin. But Francis not giving up. We can hear his running engine right behind us. Looks to me that the top four is pulling ahead. Yes, Levin is pulling a great distance over Hunt Howard Frenson. But Frenson's not giving up. He's still quite distance from behind. Very good three. Race order. In first place, Williams number one. Second, Michael Schumacher. Third, Ralph Schumacher. In fourth position, that sounds like a very, very interesting top three. Ralph Schumacher has obviously capitalized on his sixth place and is ready challenging Villeneuve and Schumacher for the lead. All for the podium position. As we see Kent Levin catching up to what I assume is Eddie Irvine in the Ferrari. As we come on to be, we can see the red Ferrari in front of us as we come into Casio Triangle. This looks like Irvine is on the back door. Ralph Schumacher which in turn is behind his brother Michael Schumacher as we come to the pit stretch and start our third lap. God damn, my... 
My voice is getting dry from this. We're into the third lap of the race. Look at that. Villeneuve is 0 0.8 seconds and further a second behind for Ralph Schumacher. Oh, it looks like an Irvin made a move on Ralph Schumacher as they came to the first corner. I cannot believe I did not see that. <laughs> but Ralph Schumacher has conceded a position to Eddie Irvine. It looks like Irvine is going to be attacking his teammate for second place. I have no idea why this is the case. But if Irvine thinks he can do it, he can sure do it. He has got the pace. Oh, as Levin comes up behind Ralph Schumacher, the leader of the Jordan team. Where is he going to make a move? As they come into Dagna. It looks like at the distance, could he get him on the hairpin? I do not think so, because it is a very bad move there. He could come into the hairpin again. Oh, Levin's breaking late. Oh, he tried to be very aggressive on the back of Ralph Schumacher, but went very right, and Ralph Schumacher still hangs on hard to fourth place. But Levin looks like he's going to make a move from the outside. No, Ralph Schumacher still holds the place. But not to worry, coming to the spoon curve, as we saw last lap. Levin has really good pace coming out of spoon curve, so we can expect him past Schumacher on the... As we come in, as we... Clear up spoon again. And what does Rashima going to do? He Levin's faster. Rashima goes to the inside. And Levin passes him to take third place. He's up into four. Make that four. Now he's got the two Ferraris ahead of him. The number two Irvine and the number two Schumacher. Michael Schumacher, that is. I'm looking very close at what the Ferraris do. If Irvine has got the pace, he should make a move on Schumacher. As he do with his brother, is making a move down the pit straight. As, who's going to come out of the first curve? Irvine's part of Michael Schumacher's in the third place. Irvine goes up the second. Irvine and Levin are showing really good pace today. Irvine started lower down, I think, seventh place. Well, Levin finished, started ninth, and both of them are in the top five. Irvine on a podium position, but this is early days. Any, anything could change from here. Michael Schumacher could still win this. Villeneuve could still win this. We shall wait and see. As we hear the Dunlop curve, looks like Levin got a pace and he's trying to pass. No, he's doing the same mistake as he did a few laps ago. Tried to overtake uh, Schumacher as they come into the first Dagna curve, but got too wide, got onto the dirt, and Schumacher still hangs on hard to third place. As we come into Hempen again. Oh, oh, no. Oh. A very bold move on the Schumacher to have it, but he should know by now that that doesn't work. Will probably have increased his value considerably by the end of this weekend. Well, of course he has. He signed on to Benetton for next year. Oh, it's very close to the back of Schumacher now. It's coming to Spoon. Looks like Levin is going to make a move on Schumacher as we come on to the back straight again. Yes, Levin got a better exit. And Schumacher, what does he do? He pulls to the outside. And Levin, his finish move, pulls. Takes him on the outside of the straight as we come to the very, very first 130R He's again. Oh, that's very good to know. He's got through to third. So the race order, as we can see now, first place, Jacques Villeneuve. Second place, Eddie Irvine, the Brit. Third place, Kent Levin in the Stewart Ford, the one the board from down under. Then in fourth place, Michael Schumacher. And I assume in fifth place, we got one of the Benettons. No, Ralf Schumacher in the Jordan. And then following by Ralf Schumacher, Ralf Schumacher to round out the top six, we've got Heinz Held Francis in the second Williams. See how they stand now. The race leader, Williams number one. In second, Eddie Irvine. Third, Jan Magnussen. In fourth position, Michael Schumacher. In fifth place, Ralf Schumacher. And, and as we can see here, it looks like Irvine is making a really big move on Villeneuve for the lead. Oh, this is crucial. Both Kevin, Kent Levin, and Eddie Irvine is right behind Villeneuve. Villeneuve's going to concede as we come into the heaven again. Oh, it looks like Levin's making a move. No, he don't make contact. Eddie Irvine spun out, and Kent Levin has gone through. Ferrari are not going to be pleased with that. As we see Irvine make, trying to make a move onto Kent, trying to make a move onto Eddie Irvine. We saw him go side by side. Levin should have known by now that the hairpin will not work. Although he got closer than he ever did there, he turned out in tears. It looks like Ferrari are going to appeal on that one. We shall see what the result will be at the end of the race. But Kent Levin is in second place, but he won't hold on to that for long. He's going to be entering the pits on this round. I assume Villeneuve is not going to pit and going for another lap until he pits him. But it'll be a question to who else will pit in. I suspect Eddie Irvine because of that shebangle at the hairpin. 
Levinson coming to the pit. Oh, <laughs> he's right next to Villeneuve as they come into the Cassiation game. But bye bye, Villeneuve. There you go, Schumacher. Another car, another car. Absolutely. Clockwork precision from the pit crew. Not a bad start. Can Levin rejoin the race in fifth place? Oh, oh. He's just hit and Frenton just He's narrowly get past Levin to regain fifth place. So Levin rejoins the race in sixth place. He's got a lot to do if he wants to in the lead. Get back in the get to the lead. He hasn't been in the lead yet. Jacques Villeneuve is still in the lead, so. So this is very good for the Williams team. If Jacques Villeneuve can win this race, then the World Championship will come down to the wire at the European Grand Prix next round. But at the moment we got Kemp Evan riding on the backside of High Tower Fletcher as we come to the Dagno curve. Curves. It used to be one curve, now it's two. Less dangerous that way. As we come to under the overpass. Now Levin, stay back. Unless you want to cause another collision and be black flag. Nope. Levin is taking a wise move. He's forgetting about ever attacking on Hairpin. And why would you? Because he's got the straight up the spoon. Because Levin, he's putting really good pace out there. Better than all the other cars. Bar none. So I'm assuming he will make a move on Fred there. As we come with the spoon now. Easy left. Then a much tighter left. As we come to the back straight now. Levin's got the slipstream, Frenton pulls left, and Levin goes through to regain fifth spot. Beautiful! Fifth position now! Oh, Levin went bold going through there, flat out in sixth gear. But he's going to slow down considerably for Cassio. Oh, he's gone a little bit wide there, he's succeeded by some distance from high tower Frenton. But not to worry, the positions are still the same. As we see Irvine, I think, scoring the fastest lap of the race. Michael Schumacher is down the lead. Villeneuve has pitted in. Michael Schumacher is still out. He must have pitted in earlier. That's why he was so far behind. But Michael Schumacher is now in the lead by six seconds. Not very good news for Williams. Nor is up Villeneuve. Villeneuve needs to really catch up to Michael Schumacher if he really, really wants this world battle to continue. As we see Kent Levin riding up behind Villeneuve. I apologize, what am I talking about Villeneuve and Schumacher? Villeneuve's got to worry about Kent Levin. Levin is in third place. Obviously, a lot of other people pitted, so Levin's gone up through the placings, and now it's third place behind Jacques Villeneuve. Schumacher, Michael Schumacher is nowhere to be seen, but this is good news for Ferrari, not good news for Williams. He's coming up from behind now. Yep, Levin's gonna take Villeneuve on the back straight. That has been his playground for the race. If, you, if you're in front of Levin, if you can't shake him by that point, no! He's hit the Canadian! Levin tried to do a really bold move as coming into the right hand of the fourth spoon, but that hasn't worked, so he's reverting to a double playground on the back straight. Oh, he's gone a little bit wide there. Villeneuve has gained some space, so Villeneuve is the first person this race to survive Kent Levin's aborted attack on this straightaway. The game is <laughs> Goodness gracious me, this is... I need a glass of water for this. My throat's gone. I'm, this is the most I've shouted in a few races now. I'm looking at the race order now. In first, Michael Schumacher. In second place, Williams number one. In third position, Jan Magnusson. Oh, Vil Kent Levin looks like he's going to make a move on Villeneuve. It's coming onto the pit straight. He does. He's doing the Irvine technique. It's coming the first curve. Now, Kent Levin is in second place, but looking at the times, 10 seconds, I seriously doubt Levin's going to catch up to Schumacher in 10 laps. So it looks like Schumacher, providing nothing happens, unless I am very much mistaken, will win this race and win the World Championship for both himself and Ferrari. For reasons that I'll explain in later episodes, a lot of Ferrari drivers will call 1997 a stolen championship for my, for Ferrari because although they fair and squarely won and lost the uh, driver championship, it was something that happened at the next race at the European Grand Prix that completely ruined Schumacher chances of a third world title. Yeah, I should I should start recording these videos when everyone's got a uh, go on the bed because I keep getting interrupted. I apologize for all this, folks, but I try my very best not to let this happen again.
10.621 seconds behind Michael he's Schumacher. But he is catching, so maybe in two laps. Well, personally, I think he's not going to catch him in two laps. But miracles have happened before. Particularly not after a very slow taking of the Casio Triangle. Decide the race. Good stuff. Oh no, Kent Levin has gone a bit too fast coming into to the first corner, so he's lost quite a bit of time. Ah, oh, and it would have been good too, but 8.9 seconds behind Schumacher. So if he kept on this pace, you would have seen them catching up right behind him on the last stage of the 10th lap. Although he's still eight seconds behind, so don't make that nine seconds. He's lost a bit of time to Michael Schumacher. Can Levin catch him? They're going a bit too quick through Spoon again. He's making a lot of mistakes now. As we saw, he went down the second gear, which he hasn't done throughout this whole race. He's closing the gap. Yep, yeah, this this race, this championship's over. Mark Schumacher is too far ahead of Levin. But Villeneuve is really, really far away. Oh, a bit of a lock up there for Levin. Looks like it hasn't. No, it has disturbed him a little bit. But like I was saying before, this world championship is over. Unless Marcus Schumacher somehow spins off and wrecks out. He's got this championship in the bag. We're into the final lap. That lap will certainly help him catch the car in front. Oh no, we're hearing a bit of backfiring from Levin Stewart. Looks like the engine's starting to fail, and just rightly so, considering the extraordinary performances this little engine has done over the past of the second season. Because don't forget, they blew the original engine back in France, so basically this engine's been with the team for the entire second year, and it's starting to go on them. Oh, I really hope that this engine doesn't completely blow up and see Levin out the race after a really excellent race. Williams, number one. Harold yeah, as we can see, Tyler 11 is, is bad. held off pits. quite a bit to make sure his engine doesn't explode on him. Of, of course, this gives the race to Michael Schumacher, but his lead over Vilna should be enough so that 11 gets second He's place. So now. he is first, second, third, fourth podium this season. I'm pretty sure. First, yes, his second podium this season. It's a win for Michael Schumacher. And the Mr. championship. Will be absolutely ecstatic with this result for Ferrari. So that does it. That is the end of the 1997 Formula One championship race. Michael Schumacher has won his third world title and Ferrari another world title to fill their illustrious history history books congratulations to both teams and also the team manager of Ferrari Jean Todd yes he is the current FIA chairman but back here he was Ferrari's boss so I think a lot of the Ferrari friends out that say that this was a stolen championship could be happy again so there we have the provisional Standings for this race. Michael Schumacher wins the race, followed by Kent Levin, and Jacques Villeneuve takes up in third place. But before we continue, two things that have developed on this race, particularly in regards to Villeneuve. One thing I didn't mention at the start of the race, I held it off deliberately until now, that during the practice sessions, Villeneuve's um, 
overtook cars during a yellow flag. I believe it was Johnny Herbert. Uh, just very far in here. Jots Verstappen, sorry. Um, pulled over to the side of the road with a fuel pickup problem. So that sector was yellow flags, but Vilna was overtaking during those yellow flags. So that meant that he was penalized by being put to the back of the group for this race. However, Williams appealed to this, so Vilna got the start of pole. But despite their efforts, Williams afterwards re, um, took, withdrew their appeal, so it saw Villeneuve disqualified from the race, moving up high tail fences. But on that note, Kent Levin, our driver, um, because of the movie deal on Irvine, and it was deemed by the FIA to be avoidable, he is going to be penalised in similar fashion to how Pastor Maldonado was penalised at this year's Bahrain Grand Prix. 10 second penalty for this race, 3 demerit points of his licence, and 5... Um, set places of this starting group for next race, but we're not going to do that because it would be too technical. So therefore, with those two out, the um, results of this race look like this. Mark Schumacher still in the lead, but in second place, Heinz Harold Branson. So he's still got uh, more points than actually Villeneuve ever got from this race, but still, we still lost quite a few points due to Villeneuve's disqualification. And also, Eddie Irvine scores more points for Michael Schumacher. See, 10 plus 14, 14 points. So, Ferrari has definitely won the World Championship on this result. And Kent Levin, um, we did say 10 seconds, but considering how spaced out the group was... Um, oh, sorry, I apologise. Uh, Kent Levin gets third place. Because 10 seconds goes 22.312. Vilna is disqualified, so that leaves Kent Levin up third place, so he still gets on the podium. He only lost one place, so everyone may be a little bit PO'd about that, but that's the decision we're going to make, and we're going to stick to it. Following behind uh, Irvine, we got Ralph Schumacher, his position still stays, and moving up to get, to get one point is John Alacy in the Benetton. And now looking at the driver standings, it confirms it that Michael Schumacher has won his third world championship in four years, I think. It's 95 points. Villeneuve is 23 points behind Schumacher and in no way able to catch up catch up to him in Europe. Um, so congratulations on Michael Schumacher there. Disappointing result for Jack Villeneuve. But Jack Villeneuve won more races this season. But as we can see, Michael Schumacher was the more consistent of the two. Only failing to score one round, but Vilna about to score four rounds, so that's the really right down there. In third place in the standing, Gianna Lacey is on 53 points, well on one point, so he's only six points ahead of Pike. How Frenson now, yes, Frenson has finally overtaken Eddie Irvine to resume fourth place. In the championship, so congratulations to Hightail Fenton, and even more congratulations to Kent Levin. He now bunny hops Gerhard Berger to assume sixth place in the championship on 27 points, just three points in front of Gerhard Berger, who is on 24. And following the, them in the top 10, we've got Jean Carl Fisher Keller still on 13, Olivier Pan is still on 9, and Rubens Barrett Keller still on 7. However, Ralph Schumacher now joins this. A table of drivers after scoring his single point. two points actually. Um, he is now drawing Rubens Barrichello for 10th place. And in the Constructors Championship, like the Drivers Championship, Ferrari have won the Constructors Championship for the first time since 1981, I believe so. Well, Schumacher was his first Ferrari's driver championship since Jody Schechter in 1979. So Big win for the Ferrari there. Um, Ferrari are 23 points ahead of Williams Renault. They're on 119. And following behind them, we got Benetton Renault on 80. Stuart Ford on a comfortable 14 point lead on 34. Then Jordan on 20. Prost on 14. And McLaren on 8. So there we have it for another year. Um, a little bit disappointed that it had to end this early. I would always like to see a World Championship go down to the wire, but hey, that's how Formula 1 works. I hope you guys enjoyed 
for watching this race because I thoroughly did. And I hope to see you guys in the final race of the season in Perez.